Hello, and welcome to another edition of Orthopedic Sports Medicine Patient Educational Series with Dr. Adam Draki. In this video, we're going to discuss acute traumatic distal biceps tendon ruptures. These injuries occur without warning, they occur suddenly, and they require immediate attention and surgical repair. Let's take a closer look at the diagnosis and treatment of distal biceps tendon ruptures. The history that patients report following an acute traumatic rupture of the distal biceps tendon is very characteristic. Usually patients are trying to lift something that's excessively heavy. Perhaps they're lifting something with a friend or a work colleague and that colleague or friend lets go before they were ready and it jerks their arm. Perhaps they're about to drop something and so they're straining to really try to control that object and they suddenly and without warning feel an acute pop with severe pain in their elbow and in their arm, usually resulting in dropping whatever it was that they were trying to lift. The key in the treatment of distal biceps tendon ruptures is the identification of the initial injury. Far too often, patients think that they just simply pulled or strained something, and this can lead to a delay in presentation or diagnosis of the condition. And this condition requires a more immediate and definitive surgical repair. If you are watching this video because you think perhaps you might have tore your biceps tendon, it is imperative that you see an orthopedic surgeon immediately so that you can get prompt diagnosis and treatment of this condition. When the biceps tendon ruptures, it ruptures the entire tendon all at once. Because you are usually placing a lot of strain on the biceps tendon at the time of the injury, when the tendon tears, that muscle pulls the tendon way up into the arm. And so you get this rubber band effect of the rupture. Because of that, once the tendon ruptures, oftentimes the tendon is now greater than five or six centimeters away from its initial insertion point. And because of that, once you tear your distal biceps tendon, it never heals on its own. If left unrecognized or untreated, the loss of the distal biceps tendon can considerably decrease your strength, not only in elbow flexion, but also in what we call supination of the forearm, which is what we see in turning doorknobs or in people that are turning a lot of screwdrivers. Without the distal biceps attached, you will have significant disability with these functions long term. That's why it's vital to recognize exactly what has happened and to treat it in a timely fashion. The reason that the timing of the surgery is so important is because the tendon, again, has retracted way up into the arm. And as time goes on, that tendon is going to scar up into the upper portion of your arm. And the longer it's up there and the more scar tissue there is, the harder and harder it is to try to dissect that tissue back out and get it all the way back out to length. Worst case scenario is that patients present in a delayed fashion many months after suffering a distal biceps tendon rupture. Oftentimes in these cases, it is impossible to be able to mobilize the tendon all the way back down to the bone without more complex reconstructive procedures. Ideally, I would prefer to fix a distal biceps tendon rupture as soon as possible, certainly within the first three weeks following the injury, but I would prefer to fix them more at one to two weeks following the injury. When the injury is fresh, there is no scar tissue, and you're able to get the tendon all the way back out to length. This is vitally important because after you reconstruct and repair your distal biceps tendon, you want to make sure that you place the tendon under as least amount of tension as possible. This will aid tremendously in your ability to regain all of the range of motion in your elbow 
following your surgical repair. When patients present to my office after a traumatic distal biceps tendon rupture, a high level of clinical suspicion is necessary in order to make a prompt diagnosis. The definitive diagnosis of a distal biceps tendon rupture is made with an MRI scan. We are usually obtaining an MRI immediately upon presentation with immediate return following the MRI so that we can discuss the results and the definitive treatment options. Once the diagnosis is confirmed with an MRI, we prefer to go to the operating room for immediate primary repair of the distal biceps tendon within the next week or so. Please refer to my video on the specifics of the surgical techniques used to perform a primary distal biceps tendon repair. On the day of the procedure, we usually perform a regional nerve block. This will numb all the nerves going down into the arm and help with pain after the operation. The operation is performed on an outpatient basis, which means you do not have to stay in the hospital and you go home the same day. We usually place the arm into a hinge post-operative elbow brace to protect the repair for the initial six weeks following the procedure. For more information on the use of your post-operative hinged elbow brace, as well as how to make adjustments to the brace for different ranges of motion as we go through the rehab process, please refer to my specific video on the hinged post-operative elbow brace. On the night following the operation, even though the majority of patients are having little pain because of the regional nerve block, I do recommend that patients begin to take their post-operative pain medication immediately upon returning home. This is because the amount of time that it takes for the regional nerve block to wear off can be highly variable from one patient to the other. You do not want to wait until you start feeling the pain to start taking the pain medication, otherwise you could be falling behind. I would recommend that you ask the post-op recovery nurse when the last dose of pain medication was in the hospital and then start again four hours after that once you get home. This includes waking up every four hours overnight during the first night following the procedure. Oftentimes, if the block is going to wear off early, it'll wear off in the middle of the night. And if you haven't had any pain medicine, then you are going to be playing catch up. Once the block does wear off and you have a better understanding of exactly how much pain you're going to have, you can then start spreading out the pills. So if you're doing okay at four hours, try to get the pills to every five hours or six hours or eight hours. The less of the pain medication you are taking, the better. We will also give you a post-operative prescription for Zofran. Zofran is an anti-nausea medication, just in case you get sick to your stomach from the anesthetic or if the pain medicine itself is making you sick to your stomach. This medication you do not have to take unless you experience nausea following your procedure. The third medication you're going to receive is a medication called indomethacin. Indomethacin is a very highly potent anti-inflammatory that is given to patients following a distal biceps tendon repair for the specific reason of avoiding a known complication of all elbow surgery called heterotopic ossification. This is a phenomenon around the elbow whereby the body produces extra bone in the soft tissue around the elbow. The endomethacin is taken twice a day for the first two weeks following the operation, regardless of how much pain or symptoms you're in, specifically to help try to avoid the known post-operative complication of heterotopic ossification. We will be taking x-rays on a routine basis following the procedure to evaluate the ongoing condition of the soft tissues of the elbow following your repair. Upon discharge from the hospital, the elbow will be placed into initial bulky dressing with an ACE wrap. Although we try to apply the ACE wrap in a loose fashion, as swelling occurs following the surgery, on occasion the ACE wrap will start to feel as though it is too tight. If that's the case, 
I do instruct patients that they can remove their elbow brace and unwrap the ACE wrap, keeping the elbow at 90 degrees. You can let it breathe for 20 or 30 minutes and then reapply the ACE wrap more loosely and then place the elbow brace back onto the arm. You do not want to remove the dressing and expose the wounds, however. This can alleviate some of the pressure caused by a tight dressing in the immediate 24 to 48 hours following the procedure. At one week following the operation, you return to my office for removal of the dressing and the brace. We will look at your wounds at that time and take a repeat x-ray of the elbow to confirm the drill positions as well as to look for any evidence of postoperative heterotopic ossification. At one week post-op, we will also begin gentle, passive range of motion exercises of your elbow in the brace. After reattaching the tendon, we get some sense as to how tight the repair is. If we have the entire length of the tendon to work with and the repair is done under very little tension, then we will likely proceed forward with range of motion of the elbow in a more aggressive manner. For my more tight repairs, we may start a little slower, although almost all patients eventually get all of their range of motion back in the elbow following this procedure. For more details about how we are going to dial the brace back and progressively give you more and more extension of the elbow, please refer to my video on the post-operative hinged elbow brace. The goal is to achieve full extension of the elbow by three weeks post-op. You then return to my office at three weeks post-op for re-evaluation of your range of motion. Again, we will repeat an x-ray to look for heterotopic ossification. It takes a total of six weeks following the operation before the tendon has sufficiently grown into the bone and achieved a biological fixation. Because of that, we recommend the continued daily use of the brace locked in 90 degrees during your normal activities for the first six weeks following the procedure. However, we will be doing progressively more and more range of motion exercises of the elbow during that time. After three weeks post-op, we will then have you start removing the brace to do basic supination and pronation exercises of the forearm. Supination means to rotate the forearm to place the palm all the way towards the ceiling. Pronation is then the opposite whereby you rotate the forearm to place the hand towards the floor. These rotational exercises are often the last range of motion to reachieve after your distal biceps tendon repair. At six weeks post-op, you return to my office for discussion of removal of the brace and beginning of formal outpatient physical therapy. At that time, the repair is strong enough to start placing tension across the repair. A low amount of tension after a primary repair of a distal biceps is actually a good thing as it helps the tendon bone interface to start remodeling in the line of stress. However, too much tension can threaten the repair. So it's important to use the guidance of the physical therapist as to just how much tension we want to place across the repair at different time frames following your procedure. For the next 10 weeks, we will continue to progressively add additional resistance and strengthening exercises to your arm. But it is not until at least four months following a distal biceps tendon repair is the tendon and the arm strong enough to resist all of the forces that you could potentially be placing across the arm as you return to work. Because of that, you can expect to have some form of work restrictions on the arm for the initial four months following the operation. I do let people go back to work following a distal biceps tendon rupture as early as two to four weeks in their brace. However, they must be off of all of their narcotic pain medication and their work must be able to accept considerable amounts of work restrictions initially. 
as time goes on, we start relinquishing your restrictions at work and allowing you to do more and more with the arm. For some employers, they will allow you to return with work restrictions. For others, they want you to have no restrictions on the arm prior to returning to work. Oftentimes, the exact time that you return to work is more dependent on your work's policies on work restrictions than it is necessarily your surgery. But you can, in general, expect to have no restrictions on the arm as early as four months after the procedure. Even after I do clear patients to return to work without restriction, we always talk about patients going back to work and working smarter, not harder. In other words, you want to modify some of your activities at work even if you are not under restriction so as not to place excessive amounts of loads on your new biceps tendon. As time goes on and you gain further confidence in the arm, you will be able to use the arm in a more normal fashion. I hope this video has helped you to better understand biceps tendon ruptures, their diagnosis, and their treatment. If diagnosed in a timely fashion and treated with appropriate surgical intervention, my expectation for long-term results following a distal biceps tendon repair is full return to activities with no restriction and no limitation in strength. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Have a great day.